difference between him and the dictator of Tunisia who was just given the boot is only a matter of degrees. No difference in principle. We have a government over us right now who claims the authority to regulate us in all cases whatsoever. As you heard earlier, that flips the constitutional republic on its head. Instead of a constitutional system where the government of the United States has only few and defined powers and all the rest remaining to the states, they claim the exact opposite. That they have all the powers that are not exclu explicitly prohibited to the federal government by the Constitution. They want you to think you have to run to the Constitution to see if you have a right to do something. Did the Constitution give you your right to bear arms? No. Did it give you your right to free speech? No. Does the First Amendment say, we hereby grant the people the right to free speech and assembly? No. It was a list of shall nots for the government. Congress shall make no law. The right of people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Your rights come from where? God. Your God-given rights. They belong to you by virtue of, of nature and nature's God. But they want you to go run to the Constitution and look and see if you got a right to do something. Can you buy a right to marry in the Constitution? No. Can you buy a right to have children? No. Can you, have a, you find a right to raise your own children and teach them? No. Do you have a right to marry? Yeah. And have children? Yes. Do you need a Constitution to give you those rights? No. No. You have natural rights. The only point of the Constitution is to protect them. The vision of the founding fathers under natural law theory, which is what this is, a natural law republic, was that your rights are as innumerable as the stars or grains of sand on a beach, uncountable. Their powers are what should be finite and defined and few. Everything else belongs to you, but they've turned that upside down. Picture a sea of rights and tiny islands of government power. That's what we're supposed to have. But instead, they claim, and by de facto they have, a sea of power with tiny islands of your supposed rights that are shrinking and disappearing every day. The tide is rising. What's the answer? Do you have the courage of the Tunisians? Does our military have the honor and integrity of the military of the Middle Eastern dictatorship? There's no, we don't hear stories about the Patrick Henry of Tunisia. There's no April 19th story coming out of Tunisia. There's no Bill of Rights in Tunisia. The rest of the world doesn't look to Tunisia to be the example for liberty. They're not the city on the hill, the shining light for the rest of the world. We are. Right? Right. So, Let's do what is necessary and must be done. And what do we do? It's not enough to tell the current servant, please don't violate our, our rights. Please don't obey unlawful orders if you're given orders to shoot the American people or to oppress us. Or any of the other things that we list in our Declaration of Ten Orders you will not obey, such as debating a state that asserts its sovereignty in defense of its reserved powers. It's not enough to tell them don't do that. We, that's why I said earlier, we should ask forgiveness. We have to resurrect the institutions we have allowed to atrophy. Who is supposed to be the security of a free state? What institution? The militia. That's the institution, Article 1, Section 8 talks about it. Repelling invasions, suppressing insurrections, and executing the laws of the Union. It was the militia, and that's who? Us. That's you. That was the answer to the ancient puzzle of who shall guard the guardians. If you were your own guardians, can you be oppressed? That was their answer. If you are no longer your own guardians, if you advocate that responsibility to professionals, to professional police, and to a standing army, what do you think is going to happen? You can do that without cost? No. No such thing as a free lunch. 
Now, because we've abdicated that responsibility, there is a vacuum of power in our states. We are a weak people with weak states. We don't muster and train. We're not formed into units of organized officers elected by us, as our forefathers were. We don't have our own security handled. Here in Arizona, you can't even keep your own counties from being overrun by the Mexican drug cartel. I know Bill Rupert, our Buford, retired Special Forces guy lives down in the border, XSF, who there's certain places he won't go anymore, no-go zones now for him and his family, where he used to hunt and where he used to go camping. He can't go anymore because the cartel set LPOPs up on the hilltops. He knows they're out there. Why? Because you don't have a citizen's militia anymore. Because you don't have, you do it with two exceptions. Most people don't, most places don't have sheriff's posses. That is starting to change right here in Arizona. So there is a turning of the tide happening right now in this country. But every one of us who swore that oath have got to step up. Because to keep your oath, you must resurrect those institutions we have let die away. Principal among them being the militia of the several states. I'm talking about a county militia, a public militia. Just like you have a volunteer fire department established by county ordinance. I'm on one, or I was on one, until I uh, had to move back to Vegas for a while. But the first thing I did when I went to Montana and became a lawyer there, I joined the volunteer fire department. And a lot of the other lawyers were like, what are you doing? You know, you have time for this. I said, I have, I have a duty to do this. I said, this is the next best thing, sadly to a militia. So that's why I'm doing this. But just like that, we should have county militias established by county ordinance, and you all should step up and volunteer to be in them, and push your county commissioners to enact those ordinances, and then you're safe. But even while you're doing that, don't wait for that to pull your eggs in one basket. Also, you better be doing private security, neighborhood watches, mutual aid associations, and get yourself squared away you and your neighbors, resilient communities, sound money, restoring the militia, food storage and preparedness, fuel independence, combo, all those things we're going to need. We should be doing them anyway because the government expected us to do that. But more than ever, we need to do that right now because we know, you should know, that our economy is going to collapse. It's going to happen. With the fiat structure that erected over our heads, the political elites, it's crumbling and collapsing. If you just sit and do nothing, it's going to fall on top of your heads. And they'll, they'll laugh and they'll rebuild it even worse on the road. you got to get out from underneath it, get over there, and go back to that foundation that we've ignored, that's, that's laying there dilapidated, and rebuild it. Get out from under that fiat system, get back to what we're supposed to have, strong communities, strong states. And then when it collapses, we'll be okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah.